Hey, what's up? This is Coach Ben from Wad Prep, and it is finally here, CrossFit Open 20.5. This is the grand finale, and my goodness, we have a doozy. If you want to get your best score possible on CrossFit Open 20.5, this is the place for you. If you want to get your first ever ring muscle up and surpass tens of thousands of people who will be doing this workout RX and cannot get a ring muscle up, if, if you want to be that person, then watch this video because I have a few awesome ring muscle up pointers that are coming at the end of this video that will hopefully make everything click. If you are scaled, if you are masters, don't worry, we have stuff for you in this video as well. I'm so excited that you've been with me this entire CrossFit Open. If you haven't yet, make sure that you smash the subscribe button because when we reach 100,000 subscribers, Wad Prep is giving away a CrossFit Level 1 certification. That's a $1,000 certification, and we're giving it, maybe to you, completely free. Here's what you need to do to make sure that you qualify to win this certification. You need to hit subscribe to our YouTube channel. Again, once we get to 100K, that's when we actually make the drawing. And then two, you need to be signed up for our email list. So just click the link in the top of the description or in the top comment below and go join the Wad Prep email list. You'll get free strategy guides, free videos on how to get things like muscle ups and toes to bar and double unders. It's well worth your time and effort to sign up for this email list. And oh, by the way, you might win a CrossFit level one cert. So do those two things and let's get into it. How are you gonna get your best score possible on CrossFit Open 20.5? So first things first, make sure that you are well aware of what the rules are for this workout. Go to games.crossfit.com to make sure you know exactly which division you're in and exactly the standards. There are three different, I think maybe even four different kinds of pulling motions. We have ring muscle ups. For some people, we have chest to bar pull ups. For some people, we have jumping chest to bar pull ups. And then for others, we have chin over bar pull ups. Wow, that's a lot of different stuff. We're going to talk about all of them in this video, but you need to know which one you're doing. I'm not going to tell you exactly which one to do. The next thing we need to talk about is that this workout has more strategy involved than all of the other ones combined. This is the first workout where you and I get to choose exactly how to do the workout. Here's a spoiler alert. This is one of the first videos I've actually shot where I just completed this workout. And yes, I did finish underneath the cap and I have a few great pointers that will help you strategize to help you get your best score possible. So I have three main strategies that I want to cover. This is whether you're scaled, whether you're RX, whether you're master's RX, whether you're master's scaled, all of the same rules apply. First, we need to identify the difficult movement, which for everyone here, almost everyone watching this, the difficult movement is either gonna involve the pull-up bar or the rings. So strategy number one, if you can get zero, you know there is absolutely no chance you are going to hit a ring muscle up. Or if you're in the scaled division, you know there is zero possible chance that you are going to get a chin over the bar. If that's you, you're raising your hand right now, then your main goal in this workout is to get the fastest tie break score possible. So that means as soon as the clock goes three, two, one, go, you are going to be sprinting, for lack of a better word, through the rowing and through the wall balls. I would suggest breaking up the rowing and the wall balls in a set so that you can always stay unbroken on the wall balls. So for instance, maybe you could row 20 calories and then hit 30 unbroken wall balls and you would do that four times, okay? You can add more reps to the wall balls and the rowing, add less reps, whatever it is, you need to stay unbroken on your wall ball sets and try to shorten your transitions. Because ultimately, again, strategy number one is for people who cannot do either the muscle ups or the pull ups, your goal is to get the fastest tie break score possible. That's gonna help you get your best score. And then with the remaining time through 20 minutes, you can use some of the tips that we're gonna share in the end of this video to who knows, maybe you can get your first chin over the bar pull up or in the RX division, maybe you can finally get over those rings. We have some really great tips, but again, strategy number one, just get a fast tie break time. All right, moving on to strategy number two. This is a strategy for everyone who thinks they can get maybe a few reps at the hard movement. Again, that's ring muscle ups or the pull ups. If you're someone, let's say in the RX division, who's like, I'm pretty sure I can maybe hit my first ring muscle up ever, or I'm pretty sure maybe I can get a few reps, then here is my strategy. Since this workout is all about reps accumulated, the tie break score doesn't really matter to you as long as you get 
a few of those difficult reps. So again, if it's ring muscle ups, I'm suggesting that you actually start this workout feeling fresh, feeling energized and ready to go. Start this workout with a couple minutes worth of muscle up attempts and hopefully successes. Just think about it. If you can get maybe one, two, four, five muscle ups done in the first few minutes while you're fresh and energized, then go knock out all the rowing and wall ball and then come back at the end of the workout and maybe get a couple more reps in, you will blow away everyone who follows strategy number one. Again, strategy number one, you blow through the wall balls and the rowing, but then you're probably gonna be really tired and getting that first rep of the difficult movement, that's gonna be really, really hard. So strategy two, if you think you can get a few reps, start fresh, hit the ring muscle ups or hit the chin over bar pull ups or hit the chest of bar pull ups, get them done and then go knock out the meat of the workout, which for you will be the raw wall ball on the rowing. This is a huge, super duper duper important caveat. You must make sure that you finish the wall balls and the rowing. If you're someone that doesn't finish the wall balls and the rowing and maybe gets one or two muscle ups, then your entire strategy is completely screwed. You must ensure that you leave enough time to finish the wall balls and the rowing so that the few reps that you accumulate during the muscle ups or during the, the pull ups or whichever division you're in, those few reps need to make sure that they put you above everyone else who just finishes the wall ball and the rowing. I hope this makes sense. Ultimately, what you need to understand is that if you say, I'm going to go really fast on the wall balls and the rowing to get a good tie break score and then do all of my muscle ups at the end, I hate to tell you folks, it's a trap. So ultimately what that will look like, you're like, I can do muscle ups, no worries. You're gonna sprint through the rowing and the wall balls. And then at the end, you're gonna get to the rings and you're gonna fail and you're gonna fail again. And you're gonna fail because those wall balls and that rowing kills your pooling. It kills your lockout power. And guess what? It could kill you on that difficult movement like the muscle ups or the pull ups. So remember, it's a trap. Start with a few reps and then finish the meat of the workout so you can get a decent tie break score. And remember, just accumulating one or two of those muscle ups or pull ups will blow you away from everyone who can get zero of those movements. And last but not least, we have person number three. This is strategy three. This is if you can do several in a row of the difficult movement. So for me, I can do several unbroken ring muscle ups. So I broke up my sets so that I didn't have to rest during my muscle up sets. Obviously, this is going to vary hugely from person to person, but here are a couple common examples. You could, for instance, do eight rounds of five muscle ups, 10 calories on the row, and 15 wall balls. This is a great strategy, and it's actually what my friend Jimmy did when we went head to head. Next, if you're someone who's maybe even more proficient at ring muscle ups, you can make this bigger set. So I personally did four rounds of 10 ring muscle ups, 20 calories on the row, and 30 wall balls. Did I stay unbroken the whole time? No, I didn't. I tried to, but I was not able to do it. But spoiler alert, it did end up working out for me in the end. One thing you have to be very conscious of, especially if you're someone who can knock out several muscle ups, you know that you can always hop up there and get two or three at a time you have to watch out for your transitions. If you're someone that makes this a 10 round workout, that's great, but you are wasting a ton of time moving from station to station. The last thing that we want to happen is for you to be flying through this workout, you're crushing it, and then all of a sudden your rowing IQ drops to zero and you can't figure out for the life of you how to get your foot out of the straps. I've seen it even in some of the best CrossFitters in the world, do not, make so many transitions happen that you get to the point where your rowing IQ drops to zero and then you're just hanging in misery trying to rotate from station to station. So minimize your transitions, try to hit bigger sets, but you have to make sure that your sets aren't so big that you're just sitting there staring at the rings or staring at the pull-up bar. So I gave you a couple options in the comment below. Right now, while you're watching this video, leave me a comment and let me know what do you think your strategy is going into this workout? Are you gonna follow strategy number one, strategy number two, or strategy number three? And let us know what the reps are that you plan on doing. 
All right, for the rest of this video, we are gonna focus in on the specifics of each movement for everyone. Again, scales, scaled RX masters, it doesn't matter, we're gonna cover it all. So let's start with the simplest of everything, rowing. This is not a rowing workout. You cannot win this workout on the rower, but my goodness, you can lose it. Again, your foot can get stuck in the strap. You can come out trying to be an absolute hero, rowing at a ridiculous calorie pace. All that's gonna do is completely blow you up for the wall balls and the muscle ups or the wall balls and the pull ups. So instead of coming out like a hero, keep everything slow, controlled, get in and out of the straps smoothly and efficiently. And I would suggest rowing at somewhere around a five to a seven on the damper settings. That seems to be the best spot for most CrossFitters. You can even go lower than that. I would not go any higher than a seven because you're probably gonna be taxing your arms too much and we're gonna need those on the pull-ups or the muscle-ups. Now let's talk about something that's a little bit more annoying in this workout and that's the wall balls. If you've been following wad prep for any amount of time, you know what I'm about to say. The wall balls are all about the clearing stroke. So. When you're setting up for the wall balls, you need to find your perfect distance away from the wall. For some people, that's an arm length. For me, it's a little bit closer. You have to just practice before the workout. But ultimately, while you're doing the wall balls, your goal should be to recover your shoulders so that you have them for when you get back to the pull-up bar or the rings. So every time I shoot the ball, what I don't want to do is hold my hands above my head and wait for the ball to come back down. If you do that, you're gonna be taxing, you're gonna be smoking those shoulders. It's a lot of unnecessary work. So what you see a lot of the top level CrossFit Games athletes do, and something I always suggest is when I throw the ball, I drop my arms back down. Literally having my arms do this allows the blood to flush out of my shoulders and it just helps me recover in between each rep. So throw the ball, let your hands drop, and think about refreshing your shoulders in between each rep. And if you can do that without letting the ball smash you in the face, you have officially mastered the clearing stroke. Just practice before the workout and you'll see what I'm talking about. It does help refresh your shoulders in between each rep. Now let's talk about the scale division where in the master scale division, we have jumping chest of our pull-ups. I have two tips or really one tip I wanna share. It's all about the legs. For the master's scale division, this is the one division where I'm telling you, you can just do all of the jumping chest of our pull-ups unbroken. This should not be too difficult. Keep your hands in the bar, fly through them, drive with your legs. The big mistake that I see a lot of times with this particular movement, the jumping chest bar, is people will use their arms too much. They'll maybe just barely use their tippy toes and then they'll actually do a semi-strict pull-up. Don't do that. Jump, use your legs, use your glutes, get yourself up in the air and touch your chest. I would not be afraid if I was in this division specifically to open up with a huge set, maybe even all 40, and then just make it a couplet on the row and the wall balls. That could be a great strategy. Next, I'm going to combo both the chest of bar pull-ups and the chin over bar pull-ups. So the chin over bar, remember that is the scale division. There are so many people in the scale division that are probably fretting, they're upset, they're pissed off. They're like, I don't wanna do pull-ups. I'm in the scale division. I wasn't making fun of you just then, but I was saying, hey, these are the standards we are paying to play this game. You need to step it up and following these tips, I hope I can get you your first ever chin over bar pull up. So whether you're doing chest bar or chin over bar, there is one major cue that I would like to suggest and that is try the box drop in technique. The box drop in technique is a proven legal way to accumulate reps. What I'm doing is I'm standing on a pair of boxes, I'm grabbing my arms, getting to full extension, and then I'm jumping in to the hollow position of my kip. So I jump into a hollow body position, drop into a nice big arch, and then boom, knock out a rep. This is a great way to accumulate singles. If you have never tried this, but you feel like you're close to getting your first pull up, I promise you, you will be blown away by how much easier it makes a pull up. Watch this video, watch it in slow motion. Watch how I jump up into the hollow position. My shoulders are back, my feet are forward. I allow gravity to pull me into that extended position and then snap up. And whether you're doing chest to bar pull ups or whether you're doing chin, chin above the bar pull ups, this will help you accumulate reps. If you're in this division, whether that's scaled or masters RX, singles are perfectly fine here. This is one of the few times, even though it's not very many reps, you can cycle through singles as I'm showing here, 
very quickly and very efficiently, making sure that you shake out your arms in between each rep. You will be amazed at how quickly you can get through these reps. And just like I said with the jumping chest to bar, if you really wanted to, and this is something that you can get a solid, consistent pace, you could knock out all 40 or maybe 20, just a big, healthy set of these pull-ups, get them out of the way, and then go crush that row and wall ball as a couplet. Another quick point that I wanna mention, if you're uncomfortable using boxes or maybe your pull-up bar is already at a height that's just above your standing reach, you can do what's called the hollow hop in. So this is the same technique. I'm jumping up with my feet in front of me into a hollow body position and then letting gravity do the rest. It really helps make your first rep more efficient, especially if you're doing singles where they're all first reps. This will make you accumulate reps very quickly. What you don't want to do and what I see everyone do and it drives me insane and if I had any hair on my head, I'd want to pick it out is the dead stop start. This is when you jump up to the bar with no momentum and you just swing around like Tarzan. You swing and you swing and you kick and you kip and you're pulling and you do nothing other than completely tire yourself out. Do not do that. It's not gonna help. Please don't be a death swinger. Don't stop. Don't start from a dead stop. Always either jump into a hollow body position or even better, use the box drop in method. Now let's talk about the grand finale. This is what we've all been waiting for. If you are trying to get your first ring muscle up ever or learn how to effectively get multiple muscle ups done in this workout, this is the spot for you. So there are a few main keys that I wanna talk about. Number one, without a doubt, the best cue to help you learn your first ring muscle up is a combination of using the box drop in method. As you can see here, I have, I have one box in this video. Normally I would suggest if there's room to have two boxes, one on each side, but you can see here, I have a J hook on one side and a box on the other. I use those as a platform to get myself up on the rings so I'm not wasting energy jumping up really high. I have my hands on the rings, I start with my arms all the way extended, and then I just drop or jump in to that hollow body position. From that hollow body position, I'm letting gravity do the work it gets me into a beautiful, big, strong arch position, and then you let muscle memory and kipping take over, and it's gonna help float you over the bar. If you've never tried this, I really encourage you, even before the workout, try a few box drop-in ring muscle-ups and see if it helps you get your first rep. You will be amazed at how much more momentum you have, and remember, whenever we get above the rings, don't be so surprised that you let the rings get fall apart and you fall through them. We don't want that. I was gonna film a couple videos about this, but it terrifies me, so I didn't do it. When you get above the rings, squeeze the rings into your ribs. You should feel your palms and the rings making contact with your ribs. Squeeze them tight, and that's gonna help you stay stable, and then you can finish that dip. Another really important cue that I want you to combine with the box drop-in method. If you're trying to get your first ring muscle up or make ring muscle ups so much easier, there's one cue I wanna talk about. And that is what I call the ceiling to floor method. So here's what I want you to do. When you are setting yourself up to jump into that rep, so I'm standing on the box, I put my hands on the rings. When you jump into the rep, while you're below the rings, I want your head looking up at the ceiling. I literally want you to find a spot on the ceiling that you look at the entire time you're below the rings. When you kip, so you go into your arch position, I'm looking up. As you're swinging back, you're looking up. You drive, pop your hips, I'm looking up, looking up, looking up. And then once the rings approach my chest and it's finally time to do my transition, at that point and that point only, I immediately want you to look at the ground. What I've done in the past is I will literally draw an X on the floor or if your gym owner doesn't want you to draw on their floors, I got you guys. Just take some object, a roll of tape, um, a, a phone, or like a knee sleeve, or a picture of someone you admire, put it on the floor, and look at that every single time you go for your transition. Just the act, like watch this, just the act of me looking up, okay? Imagine I have the rings like this, and then I pull them to here, and if I literally just look down at the floor, right? I'm looking down at the floor. What position am I in? I am ready to finish and do a dip. It's very simple. It's just body mechanics. So think ceiling to floor, use the box drop-in method, and you might be surprised. If this helps you get your first ring muscle up, you better leave a comment below. Please let me know if this tip helps you get your first ring muscle up. And by the way, 
If you are someone who's looking for more ring muscle up coaching, we have so much content here at Wad Prep on YouTube and on Facebook, on all of the different social media. So please go into the search bar, type in Wad Prep Ring Muscle Up, and I promise you, we are gonna help you get your first one. Open magic is real, folks, and I know from the pit of my soul that we are gonna help hundreds, if not thousands of athletes get their first ring muscle up, and it's gonna happen during 20.5. So you better leave a comment, because I am so pumped, and I am ready to help. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them, because I'm gonna be in there commenting and pointing you in the right direction to help you get those first few reps. And last but not least, we talked about it with the pull-ups. Do not start from a dead hang. So I've seen it all the time. People will jump up to the rings, or they won't even jump up. They'll, they'll literally grab the rings, and then they start with a swing, and then another swing, and a slightly higher swing, and a fourth swing, and a fifth swing, and a sixth swing. And then finally, at some point, they decide it's time to attempt a muscle up after essentially already doing like seven or eight swings. That's ridiculous, and it's not going to help you maximize your energy to get reps. So instead, utilize the box drop-in method, do one swing up on the rings, you're gonna nail it. And one final point for the ring muscle ups, it is totally fine to do quick singles. So even if you're someone that does the strategy three, like I talked about, so maybe you're someone that wants to do eight rounds of five ring muscle ups, 10 calorie row, 15 wall balls, those five ring muscle ups in theory could be quick singles. That's perfectly fine. And quick singles can be really, really effective in this workout. If you're not someone who's comfortable at stringing multiples together, then don't worry about it. Stringing multiples together isn't necessarily going to win you this workout. You just need to be quick and efficient and not fail. The last thing we need to do, especially for, for people who can do muscle ups, you know when you reach failure and you start failing and failing, each one of those reps is taxing you so much and you're getting zero reps for it. So take an extra breath, utilize the tips that we're talking about, and don't be afraid to go for singles. So there you have it, folks. Those are the tips for 20.5. Again, we have so much great content, especially if you're someone trying to get your first pull-ups, first chest -to bar first ring muscle-ups. If you just search wad prep and then that movement, we have great, great content here on the internet that will help you achieve those goals. So once we get to 100,000 subscribers, we are giving away a CrossFit Level 1 certification. All you need to do is click the subscribe button below this video and sign up for the Wad Prep email list. Just click the link in the description, go to wadprep.com, sign up for the email list. It's the big button on the page that you land on, and then you will be entered to possibly win a CrossFit Level 1 certification. I can't wait to do it, but it doesn't happen until we hit that 100K mark. Spoiler alert, Coach Jimmy and I have been releasing a recovery video to help you recover from 20.1, 2, 3, and 4, but this time, very soon, if you're watching this video, chances are we will be releasing on Saturday morning a head-to-head -head video between Jimmy and I, and I'm not going to tell you who won, but it's a pretty awesome showdown. So if you want to see Coach Jimmy and I go head-to-head -head and see exactly how I hit this workout, my strategies, my complete failures, my laying on the ground and wishing I was dead. If you want to watch that, stay tuned. We will be posting it here to the YouTube channel and you better be subscribed. That way you don't miss it. So it's been a pleasure working with you. Thank you so much for all the love and support and you thinking that somehow my acting is funny. Thumbs up if you like the video and wad prep in general. Thumbs down if you think I need to just go jump off a cliff or something. And last but not least, I will see you next week.